About a year ago, I decided that I did not like uh, the way my backyard looked. There was this little area right behind the house that I wanted to do some development. So what I decided to do was build this deck out of paver stones. And I had this vision that, uh, of what it would look like. So what did I do? I measured out the area. I was very careful in measuring out the area. Um, I kind of drew up my plans. I went down to whatever it was a hardware store and I bought my supplies. I bought the lumber, I bought the connector joints, uh, the special screws, and I got out my tools. And with my very careful measurements, I went to work. Like I said, I, I measured out my wood, I got my electrical saw, and I cut the frame that I was gonna use because I'm using these stones for the paver. And the stones are so big, they're heavy, they're like 40 pound stones, and it was about 100 of them. It's so heavy that I needed a frame to sit the stones on so that I had the right look. So then as I cut my frame and put it together and assembled it all, and I took a look at it and I realized this is some really, really good work. Now, as I added those stones and set them all down, again, remember, it's about 100 stones and they're about 40 pounds each. That was a, that was a serious workout. But I, I put the stones on top of, of my uh, frame and I realized, wow, I've got a lot of wood exposed. This frame was not cut very well. I didn't do so well. And you know, you know, it turned out that actually I eliminated all of that exposure and created what I thought was a really, really good looking deck. But then I realized that these stones were a bit wobbly on the end because I cut too far and there was not enough frame, there was not enough foundation under the stones to make it stable, to make it reliable because it was unsupported. Now, there's some really good lessons there. I'm just gonna summarize this real quick. I think you can understand where I'm going. One, you want to make sure that anytime you're making a presentation, uh, you don't want to overexpose yourself. Now, if you're talking about an IRS offer and compromise, it's very dangerous to overexpose yourself because you are providing uh, IRS financial information that maybe you don't have to. You don't wanna overexpose yourself. But also, when you make that presentation, you want to make sure that it's information that can be relied upon. You want to make sure that it's properly supported. Because if it's not, then the, the government is not going to be willing to stand on it in, in order to make a counteroffer that's going to be favorable to you. Important lessons there. So I probably could have followed the advice that I give to other people is that when you don't really know what you're doing, you know, sometimes it's better to bring in a professional that does. But just as importantly, what I should have done, obviously, was measured twice before I made that first cut. And that's what I want to make sure that you do with your IRS offer and compromise. You want to make sure that if IRS is going to measure twice before they cut once, you want to make sure that you do at least uh, a two times measurement. That makes sense, right? 